down. This battle's to the end. Face up, face down. Stay on guard. Face up, face down. Play your strongest card. I am gonna await us all. Good morning and welcome back to YCS Sydney 2017. I'm here with Brandon. Welcome hey. back, Brandon. What's going on? We're, we're here. We're ready to go. We've got a few more rounds of Swiss. We've got three more rounds of Swiss today and then we're going to make a top top cut. I can't remember how many were there. I think it's 32. 32, yeah. yeah. I, I also thought it was 32, but yeah. I didn't want to say that and then disappoint somebody later. Yeah. So, um, we, we had some pretty crazy decks yesterday. We did. We had a lot of yeah. crazy decks yesterday. A lot of variety. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. yeah, I did wonder what year it was. Quite a lot. Of, yeah. quite a lot of the time. Um, but you know, a little more serious today. We've got um, we're starting off with Paleozoics versus Mermails. Um, Mermails not necessarily up there with the kind of top three decks, but no, but with uh, still. the frog support, totally awesome. They're able to uh, boost up, and yeah. then doing good showing, doing pretty good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I remember when um, summoning Abyss Trite off of Bahamut Shark was like. Yeah, <laughs> that that was a really good play, and now you've got totally awesome yeah. someone instead. <laughs> it's even better. So um, yeah, let's let's not mess around any further. Let's get over to the table and see what's going on. So we see the dice roll. Yeah, the dice roll set was nine, and then. Is that six or a one? I don't know. You never know. It's you can true. never tell. I'm gonna go with one. Yeah. Okay. Because why not? Oh no, because sometimes the symbol is six. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see who gets to go first here. So yes, we have Oliver Parley from uh, New Zealand playing Paleozoics and Leo Chen from China playing Mermail. So, you know, super serious matchups now today. If we can get any any more crazy decks going on, then we definitely, definitely will. Uh, okay, maybe he's not playing. Okay, we, we have the wrong deck list in front of us. Aha, okay, here we go. Leo yeah. Chan's playing no mail. And... Uh, Oliver Pali. Oliver Pali. He's playing Plazox. Here we go, okay, that was confusing. That was confusing. So you see a Giga and X hitting the board. I'm gonna get him a search. Searching a V. Ah, uh, yeah, my bad. So yeah, he's actually playing ABC's not. No, no. Whoops. <sighs> I can't really have an excuse. It's not very early, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so, I mean. Anyway, we can see he's playing ABC's. So, not the best of starts, no Union Hanger. But he does have uh, two sets. Yeah. Which could be uh, pretty threatening. Yeah, so we can see his opening hand here. What, what are those two sets? I see one strike and two interests, so that's pretty good. He's also got Gamma Seal just in case for next turn. That's actually a pretty good opening hand here for Leo. And Oliver has this bunch of traps, pretty yeah, standard. Right, yeah, well, as expected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does have a D bearer and a strike, or a yeah. dimensional bearer. No fear of straight flush. No fear. <laughs> I've uh, actually seen that resolved. It was pretty, uh, it was pretty bad. That would be pretty crazy, but we do see a twin twister being activated in the end phase. Yeah. Hitting the strike and the uh, Canadian. Do you remember, you remember when Full House was in the matter? Yeah, I do. That was, that was so scary. I remember when, when that happened, oh, that was just, it was during hat format, wasn't it? Yeah. It was kind of, well, it was and five fist as, well. as yeah. well, yeah. You used to, yeah, that was so scary. You never wanted to, like, play into it, but yeah. at the same time, you just kind of had to at some point, because, you know, you, you, you had those two face-ups, and three face-downs wasn't actually that bad. And even sometimes you'd have your opponent popping their own face-downs, yeah. because, you know. Yeah, whenever it resolved, you were never in a good situation. No, exactly. Yeah. So 
So we see Dynamiscus being activated. Yeah, he's going to hit that again. He's going to chain Canadia. And discard another copy of Dynamiscus. Yep, so now and he's being able just to, filling the graveyard. Yeah, being able to vanish the uh, Gigan X. Yeah. It's always a nice place for it to be. Oh, what, what, where, where, do you, where do I put the punch card? <laughs> okay, now Judge is just making sure that everything is in order. So we see B. Still no Union Hanger. Which is never uh, good for the ABC player. No, it's usually, it's kind of, uh, you know, it, it's very much the core of the deck when yeah. you're getting that Union Hanger out. Because it just, every single summon you're making is giving you that plus one advantage. And they played three Terraforming for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Because that card is just so important to the deck. Yeah. So we see attack over Canadia. And passing turn. Okay, so both plays here just establishing a bit of a game state. Here's Olinodes. Now he's going to chain the Dynamicious. So, yeah, we don't know what Oliver's other face down was, but it's certainly. Uh, I believe that might be Dimensional Bear. Okay, then. I think, yeah. He could, you know, in quotes, waste the Dimensional Barrier to get another. Pills work out to at least you know get some get some steam going, which might be worth it because uh, Leo does have only one card in hand and only one monster on the field. Yeah, so it might be yeah just just like a single totally awesome yeah. could could be the could be this like kind of sealing his fate here. So um, yeah, so it's just something to mention for um, for this game. I've been I've been asked that I have to. Uh, you know, big thanks to the guys who compiled the kind of uh, Hall of Fame spreadsheet for, for Australia. So um, that's going to help me a whole bunch today, finding finding the top players. So that's uh, Marcus Wheeler and Bowden uh, Temnik, Jono Ritzau, and then uh, Yowie as well, Yowie Zhang. So thanks, guys. So we did see the Dimensional Barrier being activated and... Uh, totally awesome. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, so certainly not a waste. Probably called like pendulum or something. Allowing him to add a assault call. Yeah, so he's getting pretty close to being able to make a dragon buster here, which is. Which would be huge, depending on what Oliver's hand yeah. is right now. Because if that's like another strike or any sort of relevant backer. Yeah, then he's in a bit of trouble. So we do see a set being yeah. done. Oof. This really could go either way based on what this back row is. So he will be able to make uh, ABC Buster Dragon this turn yeah. if he so uh, wants to. Yeah. So Leo, considering his options, uh, no stand by face, tell the options being activated, something to do frog. Yeah. So just more food for that. Surprise, no swap frog. Oh, it's so we can only attack Duke frog, of course. So that is uh, a good play. So if ABC Bus Dragon does hit the field, he'll only be able to attack the Duke frog. As we see, Terraform being yeah, activated. Yeah. So this is kind of, you know, I wouldn't say comeback time by any means, but I think Oliver has to negate this here. Not that it's going to provide him much use on his side of the field, just that it was going to be so vital to, uh, to Leo's game plan here. But he lets it go. Which means his back row might be uh, pretty good. Yeah, that, I think that's kind of... It's got to be, doesn't it? Okay, so shuffles the deck. Because the oh. ABC Dragon won't be able to attack over... That's totally awesome here, unless he has... Oh, but then he can activate that normal summon, so maybe he yeah. should have negated it. Okay, so uh, we're just having a bit of difficulty activating this card here. 
Oliver is deciding whether that's okay or not. And he chooses to negate the union on you. Oh no, he's gonna put Dupog right down. The professor. Professor Frog? Professor Frog, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, teaching all the other frogs how the world works. So let's choose to negate it. Yeah. So just a bit of questioning going on here between the two players. Uh, just checking if Duke Frog will be able to search. Yeah. So, what do you think? Um, what do you What do you think is kind of prevailing here? Do you think Oliver's ahead, or do you think Leo's ahead? It really depends what his back row is, because he's going to be able to summon ABC Buster Dragon. And he's going to be able to attack over. Totally awesome. But if that back row is anything like relevant, like Wobbuck or anything, then obviously. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. I think it's it, it is quite reliant on what that back row mm. is because he was in a good situation uh, but then he did have to negate the union hanger or he would have been in a bad situation yeah so I think he drew the terraforming for turn so a great draw yeah I think they're just discussing uh, about Duke Frog and whether it misses timing or not So yeah, the judges here just conferring. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, Leo does have in his hand right yeah. now. He does have an ASL core, but his other card, I think it might be the same card that he had last turn. Yeah, I can't. And I, can't I don't think he did anything with it, so it might not be. Yeah. The best he can work with, but he does. He does have access to ABC Dragon, so. That's probably going to be what we're going to be seeing. Yeah. Which means he can choose to use the effect and banish the Totally Awesome. Since Totally Awesome has now used its effect. Let's have a look. Let's uh, have a read of Totally Awesome. Oh, I type. Uh, let's have a look exactly where it says. Yep, so it is the cost to send. So uh, I think they've resolved it and he's not going to get the, the frog effect. He does have Dimensional Barrier, so that's huge. Yeah, that's pretty good. He can just call Fusion and then mm -hmm. not worry about Dragon Booster at all. So that's a, a huge play right there. Yeah, really, really big. So that was that was one of those back rows we were talking about, really. That's yeah. That's one of the ones that he's going to make a huge One of the, the better back rows that he could have had. Yeah. But still, um, Oliver has to do something to, to stop that from next turn. Yeah, he doesn't. He only has one card in hand, and he really needs to just keep drawing traps and then just get the field going. Yeah. But he can summon Swap Frog, able to send Rodent Rodent, which yeah. means he can bring that out, so he can make another rank two. Yeah. Has he got another frog in grip? Yeah, he has a uh, Duke Frog. Yeah. 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 Uh, Duke Frog. I do like Duke Frog. He looks so cool. Though. Yeah. It's a good card. So you may see another totally awesome here. Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty good card to top deck. That is a very good card to top deck. Bench to 10, draws 2. I think our judge is just getting a quick picture of that. Of what he banished. So we can see just how. Uh, uh, always good to know. Yeah, just how yeah. many cards he kind of took away from see himself. Situation uh, he's yeah. put himself in. Here we go, so we can see. Quite a big chunk of monsters I see in there. He oh, did. No, only two. He did banish two of his uh, Paul Desires, which is probably. That's actually. That's probably a, very that's happy a good about. thing. Yep. Yeah, that's a good thing. 
Um, he did banish a Reckless Greed, and that's quite a lot of Paleozoic cards that he banished, like four Paleozoic cards. He did lose a Rodentone, but he does have fun in Grave, so yeah. you probably won't be too upset about that. Yeah, no, I think I think I was kind of smart to get that, but it was the regular line of players, but yeah. you know, getting that Rodentone uh, run into in the graveyard before, before playing Desires is always good, because if you banish all of them, then you're really at a big disadvantage. So he's considering his options. There is a few rank twos he can go into. Yeah, I think he has to. He has to go into something that's going to stop uh, Dragon Buster next turn. Well, he has uh, totally awesome, which he can negate it, but it can be attacked over. So. so they, well, th yeah. At that point, if, if he just summons Dragon Buster and just like, yeah, attack over yeah. totally awesome. Yeah, attack over totally awesome again. Okay, so yeah, he's gone with it. It's basically to believe he's back row once again. It's probably going to be relevant. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He 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 was able to draw an extra two cards. Yeah, so we don't actually know what those two cards are, but yeah, the, I, I saw one of them was a trap card. It must yeah. be something relevant. Which means he can get uh, his Pelos Ox engraved to start uh, coming to the field. Yeah, well, he's got and plenty, he's got plenty yeah. engraved right now, hasn't he? And to start establishing a, a board. Yeah. So, very good position for Oliver right here. Yeah, dra Dragon Buster still hat. So, even if it is a, a Canadian. The Paleozo Canadia Dragon Buster starts twenty eight hundred defense, so it's not like Totally Awesome's gonna be able to tackle over it. Definitely needs to. He needs. He's gonna have to use his extra deck to get rid of the Dragon Buster. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see. He's just. That's kind of you know he he's he's had quite a bit of time to plan this kind of um, attack that def well, defense from now the Dragon Buster. Now something so. the Duke Frog, which means ABC Dragon can only attack the Duke Frog. Yeah. So that's one, that's one good way of, yep. of kind of temporarily dealing with it. But he does have an Assault Call in hand, so... Yep. He does have a way to get... Oh, no, he can't even get over Doofrog because it is No, he can't get over Doofrog with, yes. with Assault Call, no. So I think Leo just scooped it up. Yeah. I think you realise yeah, that so. uh, he's in a too bad of a state. Yeah, come back. yeah. I think double till the awesome is pretty scary. <laughs> and two back row, which uh, more than likely were Pelly's other cards to bring out. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. At that point, uh, and yeah, I think he kind of easily had enough materials to make another rank two monster. So going into side decks, uh, Oliver has uh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, uh, which he would probably bring in, more than likely. Uh, two Dark Owls, Regeki. It does have three Y taps, which you could see, but I feel like... Hmm, maybe. I don't think he'll care about them too much. Yeah, I don't think it's worth, worth the kind of potential of them not being good. In the mirror match, they're definitely going to be good, but... yeah. But uh, Winter Cherry is definitely, definitely coming in. Get rid of that ABC Dragon. Now, uh, more than likely, Winter Cherries and possibly like Dark Hole Regeki. Yeah. Is what I see uh, I'll bring in. Yeah. And for uh, Leo, so he does pot. have Pot of uh, Goodness. Or Goodness. <laughs> it's a very hard <laughs> one to say. <laughs> Acquisitiveness. Acquisitive, all right. Pot of acquisitiveness. I must say it's a bit, it's a bit of a long word, a bit of a long one. But yes, still, I think it would be a good idea to put those yeah. in. Definitely a good idea to put those in. Uh, Union scramble as well. Loads of different people playing Union scramble. Yeah, it's very good card. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, it's not amazing, but it's in, in the right situation, it can just yeah, it can be a blowout. In, in, yeah. in general, it's not. Yeah, I should have said in general, it's not yeah. like amazing, in, but. In general, yeah. In very specific situations, you can just outright win. Yeah. And uh, one of my favorite cards of all time, actually, the uh, Exceed Encore, is I absolutely love it. I haven't seen that card in a while, so that'd be, yeah. yeah. I, I actually, I, I specifically remember winning a. I, I, I'm in a regional. I could have just been like a winner box tournament, but I remember winning winning a tournament on this, and my opponent got really mad. He was like, "Who, who plays that in this format?" And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> I just won with it. Why, why yeah. are you like? You're telling me that I'm playing a bad card." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I think it was during hat format. I, I played it right at the start, just because I, I I picked up I picked up loads of them because I just yeah I really liked it. And it looks pretty cool. There's just so many reasons. Mm. TCG exclusive as well. So I would like to see that come in, just because I haven't seen the cabin played in a very long time. Yeah, no, I think it will. I yeah. think it will. It's a great way to deal with totally awesome because yeah. you can't negate it. Yeah. It exceed on card. You just can't be responded to. So yeah, there's there's a bunch of really cool side deck options here. I can see um, Oliver getting very confused if his opponent yeah. plays on card. <laughs> And since Leo will be going first, I do see him uh, possibly uh, starting out his two dark holes, uh, especially going first. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a couple of eclipses as well, which yeah. he's probably gonna like. Encore is probably a better a better shot than yeah. than the eclipses, to be fair. Just because they both yeah do the same thing. So are both these players X1 or X2, do you know? Um, so they were around table, I think it was like 21 or something. So that would probably so be like X1. Yeah, X1. At the very least X1. Yeah. So a lot on the line here, uh, round 8, still two more rounds after this. Yeah. Both players are definitely looking for a win. Yeah. So a lot of thought will be going behind their players. Yeah, it's getting pretty. Uh, it's getting kind of quite close up at the top here. When 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 it's into day two, you you really need to be winning your matches. Especially when you get to like, you know, X one, is pretty, pretty questionable. Yeah. If you want to get any, you know, if you want to, if you really really want to be in the top cut, I think I, actually I, I sat and worked it out yesterday. So there's going to be. Um, it's going to be something like 10 players on X1, obviously one player on um, one player on XO, and then 44 players on X2. This is assuming no yeah, draws. Yeah. So if we're cutting to the top 32, there's only like 16-ish spaces for X2s. So yeah, you're gonna have pretty you're gonna have to have pretty decent tiebreakers. I mean, X11 is going to be like. I think that's, that, that's more likely that you know than than the next two's getting yeah. in. There's probably only going to be a, a handful of X twos getting in, but more X one ones than than X twos. So we have done shuffling and yep. bet to go into game two. We love all that, don't we? <laughs> so here we go, game two. Yep, Leo probably going to go first. Hoping to open up the Union Hanger or the Terraforming. Yeah, I think his Union Hanger was just a little bit late. Yeah. During the last game, well, that's always a good start. for on Thrasher. He doesn't have. Uh, we can see the hands now. He's got them in, and he doesn't have Union Hanger or Terraforming. Yeah, does have two Max Double Max C. Wow, that's a little bit rough. And he does have the Twin Twister and yeah. the C Wyvern. Yeah. As we see, uh, Oliver summoning Swap Frog. Oliver's actually got a really good hand. Oh, and he's got Swap Frog as well. That makes that hand even better. So yeah, the Ronin Toadin's in a safe place, and then he's going to play Part of Desires. And even even if... Actually, he could play Part of Desires first, because he has Pelizoic Lean Troilia. Mm. So pretty much just Part of Desires. Probably would be like, no fear, really. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah, he knows yeah. that he can just add whatever he needs back. Yeah, exactly. Any of his key cards that, that get sent away. Let's have a look, see what are in those 10 cards. So once again, he does banish both these other copies of Photo Desires. Wow, yeah. that is really good. That is. He does get rid of one of his copies of System Down, which is unfortunate, but still probably another two copies in there. He does lose a copy of Swat Frog and Rodent Toad. Yeah. But he has sent one, so once again, he must be feeling pretty good about that yeah I think I think he's I think that's no that was super happy that that, that part of his eyes was really great 
And using Swap Frog's effect, add it back to hand, and then we'll just see a bunch of sets. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, keep this that's the thing with Swap Frog. He's so elusive. You can just keep on using him over and over again, as long as you're willing to, to use your uh, Swap Frog. Uh, your normal summon, sorry, to summon the Swap Frog each turn. Yeah. But it's worth it. It's worth it. In oh, yeah, definitely. Because like yeah. you immediately then get, like, you get your normal summon back by, by playing... Mm. Uh, and this allows him every turn just to keep uh, yeah. filling his grave with uh, frogs. Yeah. So he's trying to choose which five he would like. Mm. So once again, a nice straight flush here would uh, do yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> that would put a lot of work in, yeah. <laughs> Uh, very risky, but if you got it off, that would be, uh, mm -hmm. be good to see. It'd be uh, very interesting. Yeah, but he does have the twin twist. Yeah, not, not is, as good. No, but not quite as good. This is exactly like the first game. This this happened exactly yeah. the same. The double desires banish, and then the twin twisters. And once and again, like union hanger. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, you know, copy paste of the the first game. Let's see if Leo is able to get out a union hanger quicker than last time. Will certainly improve. improve we do see the terraforming. He need once again top decks it just like the previous yeah, game. Yeah, wow. but I think it was a turn earlier this this game. Yeah, yeah. So let's. See. I'm pretty sure that that's going to make a big difference. That 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 one turn earlier is going to make a huge difference. But does he have a uh, Olenoidus to? Pop it. I don't think the answer is yes. Oliver is looking at his back rows, hoping that one of them suddenly turns into one of his. <laughs> oh, he does have something. Mean Charlie. So I think he's uh, just trying to. So going back to his cards, Spanish file. Board advantage. Let's see a few what cards you, being yeah, added back. What uh, going to add back? Maybe the Rodent Toad. Yeah, my immediate. Just so my he's my able to. Was the Rodent Toad? Yeah, it could just be generic um, Paleozoic, or, or like he's got three choices. He's got the Rodent Toad in. Uh, food for the for the Ronin Torin's already there, or another Paleozoic card. That's the three main choices. So he chains the Maxi to the Dynamischus. That's now. Will this be to negate or to draw? No, to draw. Uh, I think it's to draw because Oliver kind of pushed pushed forward the Dynamischus. So yeah, I think it, I okay. think it's to draw. And he decides to add the Swap Frog back. So it's the Swap. So he went with option number two. Bit of food for the uh, for the current Ronin Toadin. So yeah, Maxi's resolved. That's going to start kind of stop Oliver in any any shape or form where he wanted to go with this this turn. So he's not going to be able to defend much now that he's under this Maxi. It's kind of more troubling when you're mm. under Maxi in your opponent. Like when your opponent plays Maxi in their turn. Especially in the Pillars yeah. deck, where you, you you gotta defend yourself by special summoning monsters, it's kind of a double whammy. You know, I'm I'm forced to defend myself with with these Pillars monsters, and he's getting to draw a card every time I do it. It's just you know you don't really want that. It's definitely a tough situation to be in, but we do yeah. see the assault core coming down. Yeah, I think with this being a turn earlier, the 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 Union Hanger being a turn earlier. So if you think about it, right now, if he if he just doesn't have a Union Hanger, he passes. Oliver is able to go into totally awesome. Yeah. And then, but this is just game one over and over over again. It's you know, and then yeah. if Oliver passed back over to Leo, Leo would then get the terraforming, and that's when you know we kind of see the same as what happened in game one. Quite interesting. Just goes to show that both of these players' decks, are, you know, really, really consistent. They they're doing the same things over and over again, which is what you want in a tournament that's this long.
so you will see uh, rank 4 play being played, but a lot of his back row could be pretty relevant, but he decides to attack. I th yeah, Just I so he doesn't like get striked. Yeah. No, I think like, I think the player is Diamond Direwolf. Yeah, to be true. I, th I think the player here is Diamond Direwolf. Because even if he does end up playing a trap card here, you know, who who cares? He's still in a max C. Should I see a Dweller? Okay, Dweller, well, yeah. that's interesting. That's very interesting. So, he's going to be able to stop. But I don't think Dweller is very optimal against Paleozoics. It's, like, it's hard, you have to like chain, you have to do the chain properly or you well, can't just... But even then, if you do the chain properly, at that point they've already played the Paleozoic monster. That is true, yes. You oh, well then, if he you activate, block one, you if he block activates, a trap. Yeah, if he activates a trap, that's said, he can chain dweller then. Yeah, that's the, that's yeah, the, that's like the best one. way to do yeah. it, yeah, I guess. See where he decides to go with this. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, but I think he needs that A in graveyard as well to, to make the buster. Yeah. So it's. Wait, well, I think he can freely detach here as well because even if uh, Oliver does decide to chain, he will be able to draw cards. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. I, I'm. I don't know. I'm a little confused about the, the dweller. I think it was it was much better to. Go like I think dweller is a little riskier. <laughs> yeah. I think the safer option was simply to, you know, go with. Go to Diamond Eye Wolf, take out more of the back rows. But he does have everything he needs, or once he detaches the A, he yeah. will have everything yeah. he needs for ABC vs Dragon. If he decides to uh, do that or not, we'll have to see. So he sets one and passes. Yeah, so I think, no, it's. I think I think Dweller right like here when as soon as he's passed his turn, Dweller's good because um, then you know it stops all of his graveyard effects, not just the Paleozoics but the Ronin Toten as well. But still, you know, I would have liked Dragon Buster. Yeah, we well, can chain a trap now and then chain. Yeah, again. So that's why it just seems a little weird. Yeah. It seems a little weird to to go with that. I believe Leo still does have a Maxi in hand because he did open two. I don't oh, think maybe then. Maybe, don't maybe think that's why he's going to do it that way around. It's quite interesting. I think this is the first, the first format in a while where kind of uh, passing, passing priority to activate a card backwards and forwards does mm. actually make a difference. Yeah. We've not really had that before. Which is always good to see. Yeah, no, no, I, I do. I do enjoy I, these type of games. Yeah, I love. I love seeing formats where we kind of see different parts of the rules be important. Mm. I, I really like that. So you see the maxi being activated, letting him draw a card. Yeah. So that's uh, once again a lot of pressure uh, on Oliver here. So he was summoning the sort of frog. Yeah. Uh, filling up the grave. Yeah, but he's still even that even now he's kind of running out of Paleo Zerg monsters in his graveyard. Yeah, I think he and since he's under dweller now, he only has one uh, play to make, really. One yeah. ring to play. At this point, he's got to deal with that Dweller quite efficiently, and, um, you know, he's giving away cards from Max C, so he's got to make this count, as well as worry about Dragon Buster. He's got to worry about that next turn. So the fact that he was looking at his back row means it may be a Dimensional Barrier? Considering he Could just, be. he looked at it then, just sort of considered it. Would you would you play Dimensional Barrier though? I mean, 
do you know the extra draw off Max C? He's got a pretty decent number of cards in his hand. That two, is true. two is a pretty decent number, especially if Union Hanger being there. But one totally awesome could change a few things. Because he does have two in hand, which means he has more stuff to set. Three in hand, sorry. Yeah. So maybe thinking, is it worth it uh, to really let this totally awesome hit the field? Yeah. When he's able to attack over my dweller. Mm -hmm. But again, it all depends on what Leo's back row is. It could yeah. be a strike. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's not a mental rare, so. But yeah, there's the toad. Yeah, to be honest, Oliver's got a lot of cards here. Yeah. Yeah, Dweller. So he's drawing off the Totally Awesome. Yeah, I think... I, I just think Diamond Die Wolf would have been a little, a little more impactful there to take out this battle. Because anyway. he would have been able to make ABC Dragon to follow yeah, up that play. Yeah, exactly. And then... He, he would have had more of an interrupt to the, to yeah. the frog engine of Oliver in that turn. Because he could have banished the swap frog just then and prevented him from making a rank true play. Yeah. But still, Leo's got Leo got another card off Max C and he's going to get another card from his natural draw face here. So we 2C, 4 set though, so that's definitely... Yeah. Uh, gonna put Leo on a lot of pressure. Yeah. That is a lot. Let's see what our Leo can come up with this turn. Does have access to ABC Dragon. We see Totally Awesome being activated in the standby phase. Seeing the Duke Frog come out. So once again, not being able to attack the Totally Awesome this turn. Yeah. Until he clears the Duke Frog, of course. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to do it here. He's going to have to perform some serious miracles to be able to... So you see uh, Morella being activated? Yeah. And then, yeah, he's just going to be able to summon more Paleo's Oaks. He's kind of free to do, do whatever he wants now. So that's what's so scary about Paleo's Oaks. Once they get going, it's just, it's very hard to stop. Yeah. Especially when they have so much uh, fuel and, like, Paleo's Oak traps in the graveyard. Yeah. Like, the frog engine and the Paleo's Oak engine is mixed well, like, so well. Yeah. And we see Dimensional Barrier being activated. So he'll be calling Fusion. And that could be the game. Yeah, honestly. I think so. I, I just all, Oliver's so far ahead, you know. <laughs> he really is. But he does have the gadget, so he can make ring four play. But I don't know if it matters because he can totally awesome right now. I think I think he should just totally awesome because silver gadget won't get a secondary effect because it can only use one effect per turn. So I think the right play, unless he does have a strike or something set, I think totally awesome negating this is probably the best play. Yeah. Or the better play. Yeah. Then he might not fear a rank four play. Yeah, that's true. I think if he, you know, he's got to, I think he has to here. It, it just does so much to negate that. So he's actually chaining Torrential Tribute, that's actually uh, pretty big, but he can negate it and then set it to his side of the field. That's actually a pretty good move. Well, he did, he did, yeah, he did activate Totally Awesome to, ne to negate uh, the Silver yeah, the gadget, gadget, yeah, and then he chained Torrential. Wow, so that's actually, that's actually a, a pretty good play. That's a big play. <laughs> And all of these Paleozoic traps do get banished, so yeah. 
Uh, doesn't he still have the material for Dragon Buster? He uh, declared fusions with Dimensional Barrier. Oh, did he? So okay. he's locked out there, and he has used his normal summon, so... He's going to want to hope that he's card in hand. Yeah. Oh, he's two cards in hand. Yeah, I got something to go with. Yeah. He's not playing the Brilliant Fusion engine, so it's not like he can kind of Brilliant Fusion and then make a secondary normal summon. And he can't even use Instant Fusion if he happens to have it in his hand. Yeah. So we see sort of no, being at a back. A, yeah, I think he's a bit a bit of a loss here. I don't think there is a there is a card in his hand that would make a big difference here. He does have the photo okay, interactor, like so he can uh, make board presence. Yeah, still not. I don't think that's. I don't think that's not a huge. Yeah, it's not. It's not the best, but it was well executed that play. Yeah, I think so. That was really smart with the torrential tribute. So really showing smart. that this game isn't done yet, but it's still not looking the best for Leo. Yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty good play with that transfer tribute. Especially considering all these Paleozoics were going to get banished. Yeah, wow, I'm really impressed with that play. So all the notice. Hits a strike. Wow, that's yeah, pretty no, big. that would have been big. Yeah. I think Olive, yeah, Olive, Oliver's got this. Yeah. yeah, I think he's got two two uh, frogs in hand. He's got Ronin Toad in grave, completely unimpeded. Yeah, at least Leo was able to get some damage in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and using an old card like Torrential Tribute, just showing why it's yeah. still so powerful. Yeah, that was really really important in kind of Leo's comeback plan. Yeah, it was just unfortunate that Oliver still had stuff. So he's weighing up his options here. Yeah. I think he's just got to figure out a way to, to play. He may potentially way. be thinking if he can game him this turn. Yeah, maybe. I think even, uh, you know, even g gaming him would, would be just being able to make a few XC monsters here. Because you could set up a defensive board, but I think if you can uh, go for the, the final shot, you would, yeah, probably, you, oh, you would yeah. take it. Yeah, you should. Especially because I think they may be kind of close to time, yeah. or at least they're getting there. Yeah. So do you see the road turn coming out? So. Looks like Doofrog is going to be summoned. He's going to go for Anomalocarus. Yeah, I think that's the best one to yeah to be able to play with here. Just get rid of that Thrasher straight away. And he's got the potential to get rid of the Union Hanger next turn. But can he? Does he have enough to stop the ABC dragon from coming out? Yeah, I, I'm not too sure. That's, that's, I'm a little bit. Yeah. I'm a little bit tensive here with this. Is that enough? Have, have we seen one being act summoned this round yet? Dragon, dragon no, no, no. We haven't we have. seen it at all. Without even uh, Winter Cherry has been activated. No, so. exactly. I think he he should have gone for Opabina first. I think, he, I think he needed to go for Opabina first. It depends. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. If he, he doesn't need Opabina if he's got an Alonid is there. So does he? He play. He first play three. Totally awesome. So we probably will definitely see that being summoned. I don't think he would go uh, to Gasto Phoenix because it's not enough damage. No. And he, unless he has a way to stop ABC Buster Dragon from coming out, I think Totally Awesome probably is the best player here. Yeah, 
Yeah, so he's still just deciding exactly where he wants to go with this. So of course, this is round eight, high pressure game. Yeah, we're getting pretty pretty late in the tournament yeah. here. So just really thinking over his options. Yeah. High pressure scenario. Does go with the totally awesome. It looks like he is still thinking about it. Yeah. That's his choice, and then he's got a couple of back rows. So that's, yeah, definitely not enough damage to finish it here and now. And I've just been told that's time on the round. But still, if he doesn't have... Oh, but then he may still have a Duke Frog left in deck, and that's the case. And then Leo may be in trouble. Yeah. The Dragon Buster here can make a big difference. Okay, so if he does have a Duke Frog, uh, he has to attack that, but then whatever he summons will just get destroyed. Yeah. So. Yeah, so he has to, he has to attack over the Totally Awesome before anything else happens. So using the effect, will he have the third Duke Frog? He does, so that's huge. He's making a giant wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Professor Frog always protects his students. <laughs> yeah, I think Leo's got a bit of a puzzle to uh, solve here. Let's see if you can make it. Let's see if you can get there. So, Leo does scoop it up. Uh, he realises that the board is just too hard to uh, yeah, crack. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's it. So we see a 2-0. Yeah. Not swift by any means, but no. we see a 2-0 victory here yeah. from Oliver. Let's talk a little bit more about that in our post-match discussion. And we're back. So, yeah, that was... Um, that was a pretty long game yeah it was to be honest um, it, I don't I don't think I wouldn't say it was backwards and forwards I don't think it kind of it never yeah, really I think all of us seem to have control it, yeah. uh, both games like a lot There was, that torrential play was really big yeah it, it was just wasn't able to capitalise on it uh, dimensional barrier calling fusion definitely uh, yeah. put a lot of put him on hold yeah some of, the, some of the some of the trap cards that Oliver had were just really great mm. um, I mean the you know there were, there were a few plays by, by Leo that I you know I think to myself, maybe those could have gone differently, but the same with Oliver. Yeah. You, know, you know, in a high pressure situation, you know, you don't, you know, sometimes you don't make the most optimal play. Yeah. But anyway, we can uh, we can get our winner over here and interview him. Actually, maybe not because we might not have enough time, but either way, we're going to be back with more live coverage from YC Sydney 2017. We'll catch you guys soon.
Virtual systems ready. Gotta find a way just to play just a little game. Got a compulsion, wanna be a champion. Gotta feel a heart, gotta be smart, play the top, gotta get inside. The mind of my counterpart. Hello guys, welcome back to ICS Sydney 2017. I'm here with our feature match winner for round eight, Oliver Parley. Congratulations. Thanks. Good job. So, um, tell us a little bit about the match. It was it was a pretty long matchup. You only managed to get through like one and a bit games before we were in time. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was long, but um, he still didn't seem to do too much. I didn't see that much of his dick. Yeah. Uh, but I guess Paleozoic goes long, so. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a controlling deck, really. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you kind of... And uh, yeah, so both games you played Desires and banished your other two Desires from from Pop Desires. Oh really? I didn't, yeah, I didn't notice. You didn't notice? Yeah, that happened, and we we were we were like, wow, that's lucky. <laughs> that was that was pretty good. Yeah, I won't complain. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. And um, yeah, both games as well. It was really strange. They were kind of like copy pasted games. You were able to um, do exactly the same thing both games. When going second as well. Yeah, when going second. Yeah, and what was what was strange is um, we saw uh, Leo get. Um, Union Hanger one turn earlier than the first game, and it didn't seem to make all that much of a difference. Yeah, by then he'd kind of missed his first turn yeah. chance, and I, I was able to set traps, so... Yeah, he had plenty of stuff already. Yeah, he seemed to get quite unlucky. Yeah. So, is there anything... There's not your, your list looks pretty standard. Did you work on this with uh, some of your friends? Uh, there's not too much you can really change. I've talked to Joshua Schmidt mm -hmm. about the list a little bit. Um, but it's fairly similar to his one from Bochum. I think, I it, yeah, I think it's exactly the same. I think it is same. exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's good to hear that Slight, the Europeans are influencing yeah, this yeah, part yeah. of the world. Slight side dick change, I think. Wiretaps. He didn't play wiretaps. No, no, no. We had no wiretaps at Bochum, whatever. Like, no, no one was playing wiretap. And I think it was really strange because it's a really good card in yeah, the, in yeah, the, yeah. In the um, mirror match. Really, really strong. I haven't had the chance to use it yet, but it. Definitely but I, I, quite well. yeah, I bet Testing. when yeah when when you do get a chance to use it during the tournament, you're gonna feel pretty good about it because yeah, it's it's very strong. Yeah, so um, you're from New Zealand. Yeah, you travelled over to Sydney just for the, the the event, or did you come over like a couple of days early? Uh, we came three days early. Okay, so you got to have a look around. Went to Bondi Beach. That's why I'm a bit sunburnt. Right. <laughs> um, but we've done a lot of testing while I've been here as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just to kind of climatize yourself to the yeah, yeah, Australian yeah. players and things like that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Right. Well. Um, congratulations. Good luck in the rest of the two rounds. What's your score at the minute? I'm six one one. Six one one. Okay. Yeah. So you gotta. Got to win both. You gotta win both. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's even. Close. We thought you were just six one, but yeah, that's pretty close. So yeah. Good luck in the rest of the tournament. Thanks. I'm gonna be right back with round nine of YCS Sydney 2017. Catch you guys soon.